Hello guys and welcome to another edition of Rage Against the Dice. As you can see before you today, we're talking about Blood and Plunder. But I know nothing about Blood and Plunder, which is a shame to a lot of you, I know. So, I've, I've dragged in a ringer. That's Nate. Hello. Uh, yep, yeah, that's him. And I've dragged in another ringer, because two ringers are always better than one, as Al Noah says. So I brought Sparks as well. Hello. So, what's going to happen first is Nate's going to tell you a little bit about the game in as simple fashion as he can, because Nate knows everything about the game so i read on his blog and then we're going to introduce to the models we have in front of you which is your spanish and sparks is french cool so i'm going to zoom in on the models because models are pretty and then i'm going to let nate talk right um blood and plunder is uh, obviously a pirate game based in the 17th century it's a historical pirate game not but rather than most historical games it's actually fun yeah. Um, that they when they did the game, they actually did go for historical accuracy rather than like the fantasy kind of Pirates of the Caribbean style pirates. Yes. They're looking at like a lot of the buccaneering era, where it's, you know, and kind of having people as they actually were. And uh, the game itself is it's pretty. It's a simple game play. There's a some good uh, unique mechanics in it, like the activation mechanic, which we'll cover in the how to play video. Yeah, we're going to do a how to play. Um, is really cool. Um, but it plays easy. It's a game you can quickly pick up and it's a lot of fun. And the, the rules for land-based battles tie perfectly into the uh, sea-based battles, which lets you have amphibious, amphibious uh, battles as well as sea base and land base, without having to get a second rule book out. It all That's works off the same set of rules. And with this, you actually have like full-size proportion to the model ships, don't you? Yeah. Um, and they're cool. Like, that, that's what draws me into it, definitely. Um, what factions can you play, obviously, other than the two that we've got in front of us? In the first book, you can play as the uh, English, the Spanish, the French, and the Unaligned. Yep. Um, with the... The new book that's coming out, No Peace Beyond the Line, you've also got the Dutch, the Natives, and um, they have like the, some European factions. Cool. Which, uh, but within the nationalities, you have different factions. Like you have militia, you've got like, buccaneers, you've got regular pirates. So there's quite a few different, uh, different factions you can play as. Cool, yeah, cool. So uh, mostly it's nationalities, but within each nationality there is a bunch of factions debating based in between like the navy, buccaneers, pirates, and militia in some cases. Cool. Um, with regards to it, like you said, it can be played on land and it can be played as just sea battles. Yeah. Um, is there like a campaign system or anything like that for the game? Yeah, there is. Um, it's a beautiful system which. Kim, it's in the in the new book. Yep. Um, where you'll pick you'll pick yourself a nationality, you'll pick yourself a faction, and then you'll take kind of take the role of a commander. Yep. Who starts off as kind of a, a, a very base commander, and as you go through through, you'll gain experience, which will unlock new uh, things you can pick, but also new actual abilities for your commander. And there's different avenues you can go down where so you can specialize them to play in the way that you want to play. It's not like a random skill generation. It's you, you, yeah, so you, you tailor, can tailor it. Yeah. Um, but it's still set points values, is that right? So yeah. if I was playing you and I was inexperienced, you know, I just started out and you were, you know, further in the campaign, we'd still play the same points. Is we'd that still right? play the same points. Um, one of us might have access to. Units, the other one doesn't. Yeah. But the points, the points level would always be the same. It'd be like say two hundred points each. So no matter how far advanced someone is, it's gonna be a fair game. Yes. Um. So each faction, I'm assuming, works very differently. So we're just gonna cover these two today because we're gonna do separate videos on the different factions. Because I think within our group, somebody plays everything. Yeah, um, we or got... everything that's out in the first book, at least. Is um, it? I think we're covering the second book. <coughs> Yeah. When the Kickstarter arrives. Oh, yeah. nice. So w that's the point, actually. We are going to do a sort of a mass unboxing for the Kickstarter. Is that right? Oh, we are. Yeah. yeah. If we can uh, control ourselves. 
Oh, it'll be fine. The second it arrives, just let it's me know. Fine. and will get we'll... two line boxes. I'll leave one closed. Yeah. I like when it, my um... shipping crate arrives. <laughs> we, we'll deal with the weather twos and the whatnots at that point. So we're going to start with Sparks's French. And Sparks has the French, so uh, lopsided. <laughs> we'll give... That noise is the noise I make whenever the camera flops. <laughs> so it's these bad boys here. <laughs> so first off we have a French commander Yep Who is this dapper gentleman here Who looks quite a bit like uh, John Cleese In a wig That is John Cleese in a wig So we've got a couple of selections of units here First off we've got a <coughs> big unit here of Melissa de Carabe Yeah a Caribbean militia they are militia, so they're really the inexperienced spots of the list. But being French, they're still very well trained, so they're better than most people. So the more points, they're very shooty. Uh, they are plug bayonets, so they can take a charge very well. But French tend to be more range combat heavy and uh, tend to be more elite than most of the other forces for things like these, which are Philippa. Mm -hmm. uh, traditional buccaneers, pirates. Uh, Nick can probably tell you more about them historically, but they are pretty good shots and they are very effective in close combat. They're very good shot troops. Cool. And then we'll move across here. Right. And this is uh, Nate. The Spanish are the closest Blood and Plunder has to a horde faction. Yeah. Um, by, no, by, not. by English, horde faction. I can, I can, I can <coughs> out hoard you. I can out hoard you with militia. That is my um, favourite word of the day. I can out hoard you. Um, the the Spanish, the Spanish by this point, this point, um, were quite under equipped. Uh, in New World, the colonies were underfunded. So that's representing the game that um, some have a rule called poorly equipped, which. Uh, We'll get into, but it basically involves reload markers. Yep. They take more reload markers. Mm -hmm. So, they, they're they not terribly great at anything, but we make we make up for it in um, numbers. In sheer numbers, yeah. But uh, we also have access to an extremely nasty unit called the Lance Heroes, who, as you imagine, well, from the name, they use lances, which are phenomenal under charge. Yeah. But they can also use them when they're being charged. So they tend to be quite melee or oriented a lot of the time, and there uh, is an absolute badass commander. I'm a big fan. And he just looks cool. He's point. He's pointing at what needs to die. He doesn't look like John Cleese though. I'm not saying that that I'm holding it against him, but I am. Uh, the Spanish commanders are the weakest because the French ones look like John Cleese and the English one looks like Danny Trejo. So <laughs> yeah, you're going to need to scour your sort of pop culture to find someone he looks like <coughs> you're now going through all your models to find somebody of acting quality Oliver Reed thank you he has an Oliver Reed uh, really just wait until the Kickstarter comes out I've got Errol Flynn coming <laughs> good point so with regards to the game it is done by who? Uh, it's by Firelock Games is that their first game? this was their first game um, it was Kickstarter they did last year um, and then they've now they've now done the uh, first expansion. Yep. And their next product out is a smaller a smaller scale game, a larger scale. We don't kind of which. Little boats. Little um, boats. Yep. Yeah. It's called ah. Oak and Iron. Ah, it has had many iterations, but that's the one that we've finally gone with. Yep. Um, <laughs> there's, there's we will not speak of the others. There, there's rumors floating around online, and you can see. Uh, Mike Tunez has been doing demos at uh, cons in the States. And that is going to be a game that we cover quite a lot once yeah, cause we're allowed to. <laughs> yeah, we, we know, we, <coughs> people know our love of fleet games. Yes, we're all about the fleet game. So I'm going to leave that here for now. We're definitely going to cover Before Blood and... Did, oh, yeah. Trail. Oh. English Commander. Hello. He's a beautiful angel. I'm not going to put him on a barrel because they're metal models. That's something to remember. Single piece for the most part. Are they all single piece? Most of them. So that's not too bad, because when you hear pure or metal models, you kind of sigh a little bit. But when you hear one piece, you're like, I'm all in. Because, yeah, metal models are better, but they do break easier. So one piece is where it's at. 
Um, do they have starter sets or anything like that? We tend to let people know of pricing and stuff where we can. Um, um, they do, but they work in a weird way, unlike other starter sets where it's, here is a starter army. Yes. The French one, for example, comes with 25 models. For, yeah. I think it's 25, 30 quid, isn't it? Depending yeah. where you get it from. Um, but you can't actually use all the models in that box. What that does is it gives you options to play a French force either as buccaneers or as militia and still have 100 points of either. Ah, right. And have enough models to expand into a bigger force of either. But straight out of the box, you can't actually make a force out of it because of the way a force lists made. So it's more just kind of like a, I suppose, like a way of saving money on getting... It's a way of yeah. saving money and you want to play a 100-point starter force. Here is a box with some things for your nationality. You can play as one of these two factions within yes. the force. See which one you like and expand further in that direction. Cool, cool. Right, so I'm going to leave it there for now. As I said, we're definitely going to cover more. We're going to do like a teaching me to play, but also a how to play in general. Yeah. So we're going to do a how to play, and I'm going to play as one force. And I'm assuming Liam or you are going to play as the other, because I know I'm using Sparks models. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just sit inside and sideline. Yeah, maybe I'll get Vincent on this one. Vince likes to do things. So uh, you want Nate playing the other side because then I can heckle him through really bad dice rolls. Ah, yeah. uh, oh, that'll be brilliant because your dice rolls are terrible and my dice rolls are terrible. So, we'll so yeah, we we won't be able to show how things die, but we'll very very much be able to show the rest. Um, <laughs> he's pulling out a giant bag of dice to. I'm assuming double show ten. off a double one. Yeah, that's not bad for you. Uh, considering uh, Spanish, you generally get on sevens for shooting. Oh, right, yeah, that is bad, <laughs> um, regardless. <laughs> so, um, if this is something that you guys want to see more of, obviously, obviously we want to see more of it, so let us know in the comments. Um, it's one that Alan's a bit confused by, so Alan won't be doing videos of Blood and Plunder, because uh, it confuses him, because he doesn't believe the real world exists. <laughs> That's basically it. Uh, same reason that you were terrible at history at school, because you don't believe the real world exists. No object If problems. Alan wanted to learn about what happened in Middle Ages in England, he'd watch Game of Thrones. That's exactly the way he looked at it. Like, the second he learned in history that there weren't hobbits, he was like, I'm out. Yep. I'm going to RE where there's loads of fantasy aspects. <laughs> <laughs> True story. So, yeah. Uh, any religious people, uh, thank you for the time you spent on our channel. Because <laughs> they've just done such. Um, but no, give us a like. Um, obviously it feeds Alan's ego which is the only way he exists as everybody knows um, if it's your first time watching us please check out some of our other videos maybe consider subscribing again Alan's ego and pray the dice gods help the smile upon you say goodbye everyone bye, bye everyone